worst tyrants of the world history and his regime. How does it feel to spend so much time with a man who somehow symbolizes the evil of mankind? Well, uh, first of all, hello ladies and gentlemen, it's very nice to be here. It uh, feels like a long time. And, um, it, uh, of course, not all that time was spent on studying Hitler directly. The work on the biography took about 10 years, but I'd already been working on the Third Reich before that for a long period of time. So I think that um, the uh, key thing is that um, this, it, it, of course, is, is all, in a way, it's awful to spend so much time studying such a dire period of history, and yet, this is a period of history which has shaped the 20th century and shaped um, our lives in many, so many ways. And to that extent, it has an importance which this period of history don't. But to that extent, it compensates a little bit for the time spent in such a grim, such a grim and uh, uh, and horrendous period of history. Niin kysy millaista on ollut tutkia maailmanhistorian eri pahimista diktaattoreista näin pitkä aika ja ja Kersel sanoi, että on pitkä aika ollut, mutta ja ikäviä asioita on tutkimaan, mutta toisaalta se on niin keskeisesti vaikuttanut koko 1900-lukuun. Ehkä enemmän en henkilönä kuin kukaan muu, joten se tavallaan tasavaikuttaa tuota tuskaisen historian, ikä, ikävän historian taakkaan, sen aiheen tärkeys. Elämäkerran tekijöitä usein moititaan siitä, että he samastuvat liikaa kohteeseensa, tavallaan enemmän kohteensa hakkoihin. Kyrsson kohdalla tuskin tästä voi olla niinkään kyse, mutta kysyn näitä, miten hän tasapainottaa tätä tarvetta ymmärtää Hitleria ja sitä kautta selittää Hitleria. Biographers are sometimes criticized of, of, about identifying themselves too much with their subset. I don't think that you have that kind of problem there. But on the other hand, there's a, some, some, some kind of, you have to kind of balance how much you understand from inside Hitler's mind in order to explain his, uh, his, his uh, career. How do you remain cool in this process? Uh, I think the, the problem is sometimes already the day of, um, of doing this, the difficulty of trying to write about a subject that uh, is negative. Uh, it's rather perhaps more difficult if you're writing about a subject uh, to whom you feel sympathetic. So it's part of the historian's job, not just in dealing with figures from the 20th century, but other periods as well, to try to understand mentalities which are sometimes strange to us. And the question is really one of trying to not to sympathize, of course, in the case of Hitler it's very easy to sympathize. It's not a question of sympathy or even empathy, it's a matter of explanation and understanding. So in this case, um, Hitler's pathological feelings about, about pathological hatred of Jews is in terms of rationality, of course, impossible to understand for anybody. But in terms of its impact, what that, uh, and how that affected his, um, his own political career and his own impact upon geopolitics, then that is possible to understand. And so I think the problem is sometimes overrated. And if I were dealing with other figures of the 20th century, say, Stalin, Mussolini, Narsitum, uh, Franco, the problem would be no different. As I said, I think the real um, difficulty will arise with the temptations if we come to sympathize with a person in history rather than to have the uh, critical distance from that person. Niin hänen mielestään itse asiassa kysymys on ehkä liiankin kärjekkäästi asetettu, että varsinkin kun on kysymys henkilöistä, joita ei todellakaan tunne vetoa tai sympatiasta kohtaan oikeastaan helpompi säilyttää rationaalinen asenne itse tutkimuskysymyksen. Tietysti kysymykseen esimerkiksi juutalais, Hitlerin suhteesta juutalaisiin on erittäin emotionaalinen asia ja siihen on vaikea päästä millään samastumisella kiinni, mutta Perso korostaa, että tutkijana hän jostakin enemmän tämän juutalaisvihan seuraamisen yhteiskunnallisessa toiminnassa. Eli tässä